So the 8th of September is a very special day for partisan fans, at least in FM24, because it is my birthday. <laughs> and for my birthday, I got the best gift that I could have wished for my scouting team. They have found me a guy who can be an awesome right back, except for one small issue. He doesn't know how to be a right back yet. Hi guys, Mr. Spacer reporting for duty and welcome back to another video of my FM24 save with Partizan and today we, hopefully, at some point in this video, will sign this man called Martinelli. Now, he's not as good as the Arsenal Martinelli, I, yeah, I mean, he isn't, however, he is, um, very good. I mean, like I said in the intro, unfortunately he doesn't know how to play right back. But because of the way that, I guess, FM24 is, and to be fair, all football manager games are, fullbacks are very hard to find. And I've been blessed with leftbacks, but I haven't been blessed with rightbacks. But yeah, just looking at his polygon, he already looks like an incredible wingback. He is just solid in every single thing. And most importantly, he can cross as well, which, weirdly enough for a center mid, a person who plays, you know, in the midfield as a defensive midfielder and as a center mid, he has good crossing. Which is interesting to me, but at the same time, it's perfect, because he'll be the best right back that I think Partizan have had. You may ask yourself though, how much did this guy cost? He's gonna come to 24 million for us when we do hopefully eventually sign him, unless he rejects us. However, this is a bit scary. Jesus Christ. I am breaking my wage budget by signing him. 86,000 per week. That is, that, that is, that is a lot. That is, that is a stupid amount. But at the same time, honestly, for a player of his caliber, it's incredible. I mean, looking at his reports as well, there's nothing really bad. I mean, he is one-footed, but that's fair enough. We're going to play him on the right. Doesn't have the great jumping reach, which for a halfback is not the best thing anyways. But the only downside is that he does not enjoy big matches. But apart from that, he's very good. He's consistent, possesses a fair amount of pace, you know, determined person. You know, as you can see by the 17 in determination. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to signing him because this guy will be incredible for us. Unfortunately, he won't play in the Champions League for us until January because of the way that, you know, the registration rules are. And unfortunately, my scouts only just found him, which is a bit frustrating. But apart from that, man, I'm really looking forward to him. But whilst that's an awesome thing that's going to happen off camera, we are here to take on Porto and we're taking on Ernesto Valverde in the UEFA Champions League phase. I'm really, really excited about this game because Porto is a very good side. I mean, just looking at their squad, you will be able to see that they are a good side. They bought Mateus Cunha from Wolves, which is actually quite impressive. They've kept some of their good players. Galeno is still there. I think they've brought in Gonzalo Borges, who's very, very good. Kanging Lee is unknown, which is interesting. Jao Mario is on... Oh, that's the wrong Jao Mario. Okay. And apart from that, they're a very, very nice looking side. And funnily enough, they've managed to keep hold of Mehdi Taremi, who at 34 years old is still an absolute goat. Man, this guy is just incredible. Look at him. He is, even his pace has not completely gotten destroyed yet. I mean, he was never the fastest person, but damn, those mentals and those physicals, we're in for a scary game. And also don't forget, we're also going to be playing Valencia today. So double the trouble, double the fun. Let's jump into this game. And this will be our starting lineup for today's game. Unfortunately, we're still missing Saldana, which I'm really excited to have him back whenever he comes back. But the squad is as good as it can be at this moment in time, barring some... Oh my god, look at this. Everyone's wanted. Everyone is wanted. Uh, I hate it. It's scary. But yeah, they're not going to leave before this game, so we don't need to worry about that. So the starting lineup is pretty much identical to what you'd normally see. We have Hudikov in goal, Milinkovic and Sanjust. At the back two, Borza, Stamidic and Mora on the right-hand side. Basic and Deans in the midfield. Milovanovic, Popovic and Moinata leading the line. And one thing that I've forgotten to mention is that today's game is also important for one particular man. And that's this guy, Rodrigo Mora. It's the Rodrigo Mora derby because he is an academy player that started at Porto. So it'll be interesting to see how well he plays against his old side. He's developed quite well so far. Once he picks up a bit better tackling and marking he'll be an incredible player but apart from that he's literally taken to this position like duck to water he's been incredible last season he's done good this season he's doing really really good hopefully he can continue but yeah man Porto scary team I don't know before we start this write a prediction at the bottom to see what the scoreline is going to be and how well we're going to do in the Champions League I predict at least I think we're going to make it through like for the past few years we have the best team we've had pretty much in forever so I think at least three victories, and apart from that, 
maybe around 11 points you can clip that but what do you think how many wins how many points are we gonna get this is exciting we're at the porto stadium i mean i love the blue honestly one of the things i love about porto is just the blue and white combo Mwah. absolutely aesthetically pleasing perfect for the champions league but we're not here for that we're here not to enjoy this, we're here to smash them and hope they don't enjoy it. Okay, so they have the first highlight as Gonzalo Borges finds, well, finds a corner. I was going to say finds a free kick on the right-hand side, smashes it in, ball goes in. And like I said, Mehdi Taremi will be the guy who will threaten us. But the penalty, the penalty, oh my god, I'm all over the place. Just like in the previous episode, I'm all over the place. It can just, please, I'm, 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 I'm all over the place, but it's a offside and is it an offside? It, it isn't. So there's no point for me to struggle anyways, because that goal was counted. And like I was saying, Taremi is just incredible. In every single save I have, well, I've had so far, he has left Porto, usually on a free, and usually joined one of the big boys, like the United, the Real Madrid, like the Liverpools and stuff. So it's strange to see him at Porto at the age of 34. I mean, I doubt he's, you know, moved on and then come back to them. So he must have stayed for the whole time. And detrimentally to us, he's managed to score the first goal. But we have our own highlights. You know, let's not let's not just ignore that. Milinkovic, as the left center back, crosses it in. What are you? I I did not teach him this. Uh, I did not teach him this. That was weird. As Muinata finds himself in the middle of space, beats his marker, finds Milinkovic. Penalty referee. Who dived for that? Who dived for that? Was that even a dive? I don't know. The ref's gonna give it. Like. I've never seen a penalty shout not given, you know, so it'll be absolutely fine. There we go. Like, I don't even need to pretend. Like, at this rate, this is just something that happens. But what also happens is that we're historically bad at scoring penalties. Although Moinata is going to step up. He did create this chance. Can he do something with it? He does. Okay. 1-1. One, one, back in it, which is absolutely incredible. Sufanat Moinata, who actually scored recently in a game against South Korea and um, Thailand. It's really nice to see him playing well in the real life. And yes, this was a real life game, not a thing in here, which is really, really cool. Also, another thing that happened, um, Serbia lost 4-0 to Russia. I, y yeah, it was a weird game. I don't know. What are your thoughts about it? Obviously, a lot of you guys are from Serbia. I didn't think we are that good slash you are that bad. Is it the manager's fault? Because the players on paper are just much better i don't know i want to hear your opinion write in the comments you know i like to have a chat i i i'll be honest i didn't watch the game because i don't watch the national teams much because not the most interesting plus i don't rate our national team you know not not never been the best player so you know there's no point watching it and to be fair i kind of thought serbia was going to smash him so i don't know anyway samedo finds samedo samedo finds himself on the right hand side and galeno beautiful save from Fudyukov. and sorry they signed Semedo from Wolves. I... Wait, 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 wait. So usually what happens is that, you know, Wolves signs Portuguese players. Now the, Port the Portuguese football is bringing their players back. That is that is quite nice. Cunha has gone from Wolves and, sorry, interrupt. Basic, one on one, the keeper. Basic, no! Basic. But yeah, Cunha. Uh, Samero, do they have anyone else that's actually from from Wolves? I mean, at this rate, maybe? I don't know. Maybe Wolves are now the feeding club of Portugal. Who knows? But, you know, bringing everyone back. Although, I mean, Cunha is not Portuguese, but still. Oh my God. Today, today's episode, uh, all over the place. As Gonzalo Borges puts a cross in, Milinkovic does clear. Moinat against Medi. I know who's going to win it. And Nemanja Maksimovic scores the Serbian man himself scores against a Serbian side and he goes to celebrate in front of the Partizan boys. That's just rude. We're losing 2-1 against Porto and bear in mind, we lost last season against Marseille the first game, I think? So it's not necessarily panic stations. So Basic is going to miss a free kick. Like, look at this. I'm not even... Like, again, Basic has never scored a free kick and he almost scored a free kick. But... He still missed the free kick. This game is infuriating as Galeno is breaking away. We are not playing well. Maybe I just talk too much, apart, uh, apart, you know, and not watch my team. But they are getting... Is it a height thing? Is it a height thing? Basic penalty. 3-1 Porto. 3-1 Porto. 
we need to make some changes. Popovich is not doing good. Mora is not doing good at all. Borza is not doing good at all. And Basic is doing rubbish as well. Everyone's having a bad game. Porto is unfortunately going to potentially go 3-1. If Hudikov saves it, if Hudikov saves it, he will be a match saver. Medi. Hudikov, well done. Good job. Hudikov, absolutely incredible. Keeps us in the game. Boys, encourage. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, boys. This is on me. This is all on me. I need to make some subs. Because this half was awful. And I was talking about anything else apart from the game. Oh, I see why he celebrated. Nemanja Maksimovic is a Cervena Zvezda guy. What a bastard. But yeah, halftime, I think this is an understatement. You've been terrible. You guys need to sort out. I'm not going to throw bottles because they never work. And I'm not going to just do it because that's how I feel. That's the kind of manager I am. I want to, you know, keep myself calm and composed and then tell the boys off later. But... Lots of subs need to be done. Rodrigo Mora is going to come off potentially for Barco. Although, now I'm thinking about it, maybe not the best shout. Maybe because Borza is not doing good either. So, I might do this. I'm going to take off Basic, put him on the right-hand side. going to take a board, board, Barco, Barco, and then put hmm, maybe Miladinovic. Let him run around a bit. It's the right guy, yeah? It's the right guy. But box to box, interesting. He's going to be too short. Th these guys are going to be way too short for this. And apart from that, do I take off Popovic? I don't have any good options. And I probably should return uh, Ratkov at some point because I don't have a backup striker. But thinking about it, maybe I want to keep Popovic. Popovic is good. I feel like he can bring something back. I don't know. Our center backs are not doing good at all. I'm going to switch these two guys around just to kind of see if I can get a reaction. And I'm going to give Borza and Popovic a chance because... You know, they are our better players. So we need to see if they can do something. But yeah, I'm hoping to see a reaction from the boys because so far, this has been an awful game. And thankfully, Hudikov kept us in because 3-1 would have been an unbeatable thing to overcome. I think it'll be almost an impossible thing to overcome. And unfortunately, nothing's happening in terms of, you know, I don't, I didn't see any phase of play to be like, ooh, you know... We are potentially have a route back into the game. Apart from Moinata maybe running through and doing something magical here. Moinata is dribbling through everyone and doing some magical stuff. Gets brought down. Popovic finds Basic. We are slowing the play. The ref played advantage. We should have used that advantage. And Maksimovic is going to recollect. Is this going to lead to something or is this going to be an annoying thing? Rasi, Rasi Opi plays it out from the back. They are playing very, very nice football. And it's back-to-back -back stuff. Borza is marking absolutely no one. And Gonzalo Borges is going to use that space. Can San Juice recover? He cannot, despite his very fast pace. Gonzalo Borges finds Medi. That was a chance. And we wasted a beautiful counterattack. And I think with that, just that one thing, I am taking off Borza. I know Borza is very much liked, not only on this channel, but by me as well. But I can't afford to do things like this. Not a very good start from the boy himself. So we're going to just make that one change. Eventually, it's going to come through. Will this highlight lead to anything? I don't know. But Milovanovic finds himself in some space. Finds Popovic. 1-1 with the keeper. Popovic. Matija Popovic. No. Matija. Popovic. 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 I... I... If that's going to go in, thank you. Thank you, Hudikov. This guy is 7.8 rated already, keeping us in. Oh, how did he not score that? How? Gonzalo Borges is going to put a cross in, though. Milankovic does clear, and we are running away from it. And that, that's a pointless highlight. But Popovic, though, that was your chance, I think. I think we're getting really close to taking off Popovic, putting Milovanovic up front and sticking Reiner behind the striker just to give us a little bit more, I want to say maturity and creativity because Milovanovic is still a striker more than an attacking midfielder. But who knows? Maybe this can lead to something. As Barco, this is the first time we see our left back commit to something interesting. Barco, he's going to find Milovanovic. Subtime. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Subtime. Yeah, so I think Reiner is going to come off. Popovic has a shit game. N yeah, not even... Every everyone knows. Everyone knows that this was a bad game. And apart from that, I am thinking of maybe... I don't have any good options on the right yet. Unless... I can't I can't afford to put... I can't afford to put Sasa Saranich on the left. Can I? 
Not yet. 60th minute. We still have time to do some more subs. But that's going to be the big sub right now. Sunjuice is also not doing good. And he's also a little bit tired. I'm going to do a demand more. For sure. And maybe go a bit more attacking. We need to do something more. What happened? What? I clicked attack. Why did you open my tactics? So Maximovich finds himself on the ball once again. Man, I can't believe he ran over to our fans and started celebrating. The disrespect. I'm going to go and put and tackle harder on him, I think, at this rate. You know, because this guy deserves it. And, you know, maybe he'll inspire the boys to do something. Smedo and so, 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 Smedo and Boris are overlapping to do some incredible things. Cunha is on the ball. Finds Maximovic. He needs to be stopped. Galeno on the ball. We, we, we're not going to get the ball off him as Galeno finds himself in lots of space somehow. Do not foul him. Do not foul him. Oh my god, maybe we should have fouled him. That was a big threat and Basic is playing trash. So I think regardless of how bad, you know, what's his face? <laughs> regardless of how bad Cecil Serenic is at defending... I think Basic needs to go. So we're going to switch Basic and Barco. Barco will be our right wing back. We're going to put Serenic on. And we have one more sub. So I think St. Juice is going to come off. And we're going to put Vitik on. And that's our five subs. In terms of everything else, we're going to go a bit more direct. I think maybe... I'm going to... I don't like this. I, I generally don't like this. I think maybe shoot on sight should be more. We have players with good shooting. And apart from that, I can't think of what else to do. Maybe play it out to the wingbacks as well, just so they can bring the ball a bit faster. Something like this. We need to make some changes. Something needs to happen. We need a moment of magic. And yes, our XG is two, and theirs is a bit higher. But we're not creating any dangerous situations, or at least not putting them away. And as time is trickling away, I need to make a final sub. Milodinovic is injured, which is unfortunate. Reiner is going to... I'm panicking, as you can see. I am switching him to be a deep line forward. Although Moinata should be there. I think so. Yeah, we'll do that. Maybe this will introduce something at this rate, but we're not doing good. I'm not keeping my hopes up. And unfortunately, it looks like this is going to be the game. 2-1 against Porto. A team, honestly, on paper, we should have been beating. But today wasn't our day. Maybe we still aren't as developed as I thought we are. We just got bullied by Taremi and Maximovic. Spaceman, in fact, has a birthday to forget. The boys did not give me a nice birthday present. They did not give me a nice birthday present. And Nemanja Maximovic got mad of the match. I'm pissed off. Right. The next game is going to be against Tekstilac, which I'm going to play off camera. And then I'm going to go and play the Valencia game. Which hopefully will be a nicer game. Because especially, I saw this funny thing. I think they lost 5-0 to Boro Glimt. Which is bad. So I have come back a little bit early because I have some great news to show you guys. And Martinelli is now a partisan boy. That's a lot of money. <laughs> 24 million, 6 million after league appearances, which he's definitely going to do. 300 per league appearances. So maybe we shouldn't play and save money. And apart from that, 86k per week makes him handsomely the most freaking paid player at our squad. But honestly... He's the best thing we could probably do. And I'm going to click this accept and lose lots of money. I am scared. Do it with me. Three, two, one, rest. Oh, God. So say hello to Martinelli, who is an absolutely incredible and amazing player. And I'm instantly going to do this cheeky thing right here and teach him how to be an inverted wingback on attack with double intensity and a focus for genuinely. No freaking clue. Um, um, ball control? Yeah, let's, let's do ball control. Sorry, I, yeah, he's, he's just perfect. He's generally perfect. He needs to do some work here for sure. The role is, he's going to be really pissed off. I'm going to play him here, but he's fine. He's going to be fine, bro. You're going to play so well with us. And when you're paid 86,000 per week, which is more than Nikolo Milinkovic, who was in Bayern Munich, you you better. You better play well. Oh, what's this? He's taking a free kick. Huh. I wonder what will happen. He scored a free kick. Martinelli made his debut from right back and has scored a free kick. What in the hell happened? 
What a beautiful game against Textualash. Obviously, as you can see, we have rotated the side a little bit. So, Hudikov was playing, Vitek, Dorovic, Borza, Stankovic, Martinelli, blah, blah, Villagara, Estevao, Perdanovic, Milovanovic, and Reiner. So, a very, very rotated side. Good news, Milovanovic with a hat-trick. Better news, Martinelli scored a free kick, which... Ooh, last time that happened, and it was a right-back, who was a center-mid, we got Amiri. Oh, no. Please, Martinelli, we spent way too much money. Don't do this to me. But apart from that, it was a beautiful game. Even Barrios, the guy we signed, he had his injury. He's just come back. First game, comes off the bench, scores a banger. Absolutely incredible. But with that out of the way, we are taking on Valencia today. And their side, I wonder why they lost 5-0. Because I think looking at their side, they look good. Aspria, you know, a wonder kid, you know, as you know, Hugo Duro, who is very, very good. We have this guy who is worth 104 million. Why? Why is he worth so much money? They signed him for 4 million from uh, Lyon. Okay, they don't know what they're doing. But apart from that, a decent side, but nothing, nothing too good, but also not 5 nil to bought a glimpse bad. Although, currently, oh Jesus. I mean, to be fair, no, that's not even that bad, to be fair. There's a lot of red, but, you know, it's Valencia. They're not meant to be the best team in the... Forgot the name of the thing? The Spanish League. Yeah. So, you know, we're expecting a big game today. We're unfortunately without Martinelli. Saldana is still a doubt. So taking the last game into account and also other developments, we're not starting Mora at right back. First of all, because he's unhappy because he didn't get a move to Leipzig for like 2 million, which is absolutely ridiculous. But also he wanted to put in a transfer request which i rejected which made him really really unhappy so yeah we'll, we'll see what happens with there a lot of players are unhappy i think serenach maybe i said something about it no i don't adorovich said he wants to leave he wants to join crystal palace okay is that a hill you want to die on and serenach wants to join united which is a bit more scarier but apart from that we have some players that are a little bit, a little bit sad but mm, so far so good so this is going to be the starting lineup for today. We're going to have Hudikov, Milinkovic, and Vitek in the back too. Unfortunately, Sanjus played a bad game last time, so I'm a bit skeptical. Maybe he's not used to playing with our side yet, so we'll see what happens there. But we're going to have Borza, Stamilic, and Barko. Uh, Basic jeans in the midfield. We're going to have Milovanovic, Mujinat, and Popovic up front. Popovic really, 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 really needs to step up because he's not doing good. And just one last thing. Overlap. Let's set it to forever. Let it be overlap because, you know, Barco and Muinata, just in case, occasionally. Oh, actually, wait, that's stupid. Like that, because, you know, inverted wing back and all that stuff. But the squad looks good. I want to come over with at least a point today because, you know, we've played, this is going to be the second game. If we have no points after two games against Porto and Valencia, we are in trouble. Okay, so we're taking on Valencia today. Our squad is looking absolutely incredible. I am a bit worried, though, about the fact that we lost to Porto. It should have been a game we should have won. They're playing in a 4-4-2. I haven't seen that in forever. Rugani's on their side. Oscar's on their side. Jose Sa is playing for them. Not a bad-looking side. But again, we are a good side as well. And I want to win. We're playing at home. Our fans are going to support us. You're going to support us. Let's go. I mean, we're playing it out straight away, which is absolutely nice to see. Usually it takes a bit of time for us to get into it. But so far, we've run out of the blocks trying to make something. As Milovanovic takes a shot and a beautiful save from Jose Sa, who has been, well, has left Wolves. I think w Wolves must have been relegated a few times because they've lost way too many players at this rate. I mean, to be fair, also, you know, it's been, how many years has it been? Five years already? So we are a little bit behind, well, I guess in the future. So maybe it is going to make sense, especially considering how their budget is not the biggest in real life. So it is bound to happen, but it's sad to see that all the good players for Wolves are now playing elsewhere, because especially he's saving these kind of shots, which is annoying. It is a little bit sad that Martinelli cannot play in the Champions League for the next games. It's going to be annoying because, man, I am going to miss him. We have an issue with a right back, and we've had it since basically the beginning of the save. We, I mean, to be fair, no, we've had Filipovic for a while, and obviously he's not a Champions League level player, but he's been good. But we need a player who will solidly be a right back for the Champions League. As Milovanovic and Popovic play well together. And that is a goal pretty much out of nowhere. And Popovic finally has made a creative and a good contribution. He's starting to really annoy me. He's had a good season uh, two seasons ago. An absolutely incredible season. And he's dropped off massively last season. And I think this year as well, he's a bit inconsistent. Which last year I chalked it off to... 
yeah, potentially I played lots of players instead of him up front. So he kind of lost the ability to kind of like steamroll. Maybe. But I guess this year he's pretty much played every single game apart from the lax game against Textulage. He needs to do a bit better because, you know, he needs to score goals. He's a striker. He scored 27 goals two seasons ago. And then he scored four, which is awful, awful, really bad. And now Milovanovic is coming through and he is going to be the next person behind him. So it's a bit stressful. Do I play him more or do I play a person who's done well for me for the past few years? I don't know. What would you do in my case? As I forgot to talk about the game, Hugo Dura puts a cross in and Hudikov collects. The man has been a Champions League goat for me. Have you have you signed him before in your saves? I he's incredible. He costs what seven to eight million, has good potential, develops, he's young, and literally comes in instead of Jovanovic as a backup goalkeeper, within a few games dislodges him, and becomes pretty much a Champions League goat at this rate. Absolutely crazy. Although, you know, yeah, we haven't won many things yes last year, but apart from that, it's also good. We have the ball. Muinata is injured. Popovic makes a bad pass. Muinata is not getting up. Milovanovic, what can he do? Finds Basic, who is still unhappy at the club. Barco! Valentin Barco from the right hand side. And it's a bit worrying that Muinata is injured. Oh boy, I hope it's nothing bad. Muinata is not getting up. He's holding his knee. He's not celebrating with the boys. It is 2 0. But at what cost? Mui not to get smashed. We don't have any right, right wingers. Saldana is just coming back from injury. I am scared to see. I am scared to click skip. I would. I don't know what's going to happen. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Uh, nothing's going to happen. He's fine. He's absolutely fine. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is actually hilarious. He's not injured. Aspria, lots of space. Staminic before the line. Staminic before the line. Staminic, please tell me you've timed that. Staminic. We can't have a penalty shout every game. Staminic, please tell me you've timed that well. Referee. Referee, come on. Oh no, he didn't time it well. Just a second before and it would have been a free kick, but it's a penalty. Can Hudikov make it 2-2? Two two? Can he save it? Hudikov, Hugo Duro, 1-1. One one. Penalty! Hudikov does not dive correctly. He falls down the middle. And unfortunately, Hugo Duro practiced it. He saw where Hudikov dived last time. He banked on the fact he wasn't going to dive there again. Shoots to the left of him. Hudikov stays rooted to the, to the center of the goal. And unfortunately, it's 2-1. And we can't skyrocket away. And Toma Basic is injured. Hmm. That's a bit annoying, actually. What can we do in this case? Well, I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Do I play Dorda Stankovic, who's a bit more defensive? Or do I try and play Matias Villagara for you guys? I mean, he's going to be an... Oh, you know what? He's going to be okay as a box-to-box. -box, and I think he has a bit more potential than Stankovic, who sadly isn't developed, well, as far as I thought he would. Or maybe I can do something cheekier. Maybe I can put Stamenic up here. He made a mistake already. Let's take him off. Put Vitek on here and take Sanjust and put him as a center back. So we're going to have Sanjust play instead of Vitek. Vitek is going to be the halfback and Marcus Tamaric moves up front. Just in case you are a person that listens to my stuff. Because I'll be honest, that's how I consume my football manager sometimes. I listen to it more than watch it. And if you say stuff like this and that, you can't really understand what's going on. But it's 2-1 at halftime. Milovanovic scored, Barco scored. And unfortunately, we conceded a penalty on the 44th minute. I mean, for a team that lost 5-0 against Boto Glimt, they're doing very well against Partizan, as Deans finds Barco on the right-hand side, who cuts in with his left foot, takes a shot, and just misses the goal. It was just above the crossbar, a very nice cut in, a very nice shot, and that could have put the game a little bit in less stressful situation, as Barco steps up for a free kick, Finds Milovanovic, who's a bit tired. Barco, 1-2. 1-2-3. Two, one, two, Back to Milovanovic. Finds Milinkovic, who's clearly offside. He hits the post anyways. And that is that. I mean, we're starting to reach a moment where I need to make a sub. But there is a highlight as a throw-in is happening. Barco finds Muinata, who thankfully is not injured, despite the fact that he didn't want to get up. Barco cuts in again. Let's the ball go a little bit. Takes a shot. Hits Popovic, I think? Or no, he just misses the shot and it's time for a sub because Milovanovic is a little bit tired. He's had a great game, scored a goal, first of all, beautiful him to play with Popovic. But it's time for us to make some subs and I think we're going to put Reiner because Reiner is still the kind of player that's probably our better 
you know, like I said, more experienced player. So we're going to let him play as a Shadow Striker and see what he can do from there. That's the second game in a row that Borza is not doing good. He's on a 6.5 rating, which is a little bit worrying. I mean, maybe he's just not sold on the parties on project anymore. Do I consider moving back Barco to left-hand side with Martinelli? Definitely not in the Champions League for now. But for next games, I think Borza is not doing too good. Yes, he's unhappy at the club, which absolutely makes sense because, you know, he wanted to leave to Real Madrid. He wanted to leave to, like, all the other good teams. And he stuck with us, unfortunately. Well, fortunately for us, though. So maybe that's on his mind. Maybe we need to give him more... Look, this is what we're doing. Look at the players we're signing. We signed Martin Martinelli for a lot of money. Maybe they'll pacify him a little bit and he'll learn how to play again because last year he was incredible. He still counted as a wonder kid on this game. So hopefully he will use that to his advantage as Milinkovic is slowly walking up the pitch, finds Stamenic, who finds Reiner, who takes the ball up, finds Borza, who's finally going to make a forward run. Is he going to cut back inside? He finds Popovic. Popovic, beautiful play. Borza and Popovic finally do something creative, finally something good. Popovic gets back on the score sheet. I've always trusted this man, despite the fact how sometimes I question him. Overall, on average, he not, doesn't disappoint. We move up to 10th position, 3-1 against Valencia. I want more. If Borja Glimt scored 5, I want to score 6. So they are playing it out from the back quite comfortably. A ball gets launched in. Bahoya finds himself in a bit of space, finds himself in a gap, finds Hugo Duro, who is single-handedly trying to pull... Valencia out of whatever rut they are in but the ref has called an offside what's it gonna be that was a beautiful run by Bajoy a beautiful pass from Fermin I think and a beautiful poacher's effort from Duro and apparently that's fine that is a very nice run Bajoya runs on the outside of Barco the Sanjus does not cover in time and Hugo Duro finds himself in the space between the two center backs and they're back to 3-2 I was just thinking to make some subs and like you know, bring out some youth players. That is the closest offside I've ever seen. That is the closest offside call I've ever seen. That was basically on the same line. Oh, that's unfortunate. As Reiner puts a cross in. Milinkovic jumps up, hits the post. It's the 72th minute and no one's playing bad. Apart from Milinkovic who's doing a bit sus. I don't know. They are countering a lot. Do I start to go a bit more disciplined? I can't afford to lose points against a team that we've been beating 3-1. Aspria! Beautiful save from Hudikov. And yikers, man. Yikers. I think it's time for something a bit less silly. Maybe this is going to be the shout. I'm going to drop Bar Barco and Borza to support. And I'm going to play a bit more disciplined. But at a higher tempo. Just so our wingbacks do not shoot up too much. And I think, what can we do? I'm going to put Serenic on the left-hand side as well. Yes, I did just say I want to be a bit more careful, but, you know, tired legs and Borza and all that stuff. And we have one more stoppage, so I, should, I think I need to use all my subs up now. What do I do? Muinata is not doing good. I can't afford to play Saldana because he's still injured, despite the fact that it doesn't show here. Because thank you, full manager. So I'm going to bring on Barrios, who's done well last time. And with a 16 pace, he should do something creative. And apart from that, I don't think there's a need to change much up. Maybe I'm going to take off Deans because he's played okay and put Matias Villagara just to give us a bit more fresh legs in the midfield. I think that'll be the best shout. They have a corner. Is it going to be an interesting corner or is the game just going to go, yeah, here's your subs? No. So they've let our subs come through, which is a bit not the smartest thing. And the highlight's over, but it's a different highlight. The game is so buggy. <gasps> I love how buggy the game is. So we are playing a bit more careful. This is an interesting camera. I do wonder where the hell it exists. Is it like, is the camera attached to like a satellite and it's looking down? I don't know. As Reiner finds Barrios in lots of space. Barrios, beautiful touchdown. Barrios, one on the keeper. Beautiful save from Jose Sa. And this is why we signed Barrios. This was almost one of the goals of the season. I mean, he did bring the ball down extremely well. But unfortunately, Jose Sa is really, 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 really trying to make sure that Valencia recovers from that loss to Borough Glimt. And it's squeaky bum time. It's 3-2. It's the 78th minute. We are playing it out from the back once again. Maybe we're going to be playing a little bit more direct because Barrios is going to be that player who's just going to run on to things as Reiner, who's had a good start to the game, actually. 7.2 rating. Not bad so far. We do lose the ball in this time, however. Aspria, 1-1 with Serenic. We do manage to stop them. Pirozzi, again with Aspria. 
Beautiful to play. Popovich steals Serenic. Can he go forward? He can not. He finds Vitek. Villagara with 17 passing or vision. Finds Popovich. 1 2. Barrios. Jose Sa is a goat. Jose Sa is the best keeper of this game. That was the sweatiest thing I've ever seen. This was FIFA level sweat. And yet he somehow recovers. Popovich was calm and composed. Barrios did everything correctly. That was his second chance. He had two chances. He could have scored two goals already. But he didn't, as the ball goes in Serenic, Milinkovic, Reiner, what's going on, why is there such a mess, Vitek finds Barrios, third chance, Barrios, third chance, and third chance, and Sergio Barrios says, I don't care, I don't get flustered, one on one with the keeper, misses, one on one with the keeper, misses, one on one with the keeper, scores, he doesn't care, he doesn't care, he's an 18 year old man who was promised regular starter roles, and if he's gonna do things like this, I feel like he can be a regular starter. What a beautiful man. I haven't had a super sub in forever. Partizan has probably never had a super sub. And he is the best super sub to have super subbed. Yes. 4-2. Game is pretty much done. I am incredibly happy. I can take a freaking break. Yes. I mean, I guess the game is not over as Hudikov is playing it out. It's the 88th minute. Still some time. Chenk shows that he's worth 100 million by passing it off to Reiner. Reiner finds himself in lots of space. Reiner. Right. Ry <laughs> Reiner. The game just doesn't want to finish. It is the 90th minute with, you know, technically 91st, and we have another chance. We're playing well. I want to see one more goal at least. Let them concede five goals again, and it'll be interesting. Although, you know, we conceded two goals. Hudikov hasn't had the best game today, which I can't really see why, because it, I think it's more of a defensive mess we have made. But we will see what's going to happen here. Serenic finds himself in lots of space on the left-hand side. Serenic puts a cross in. Serenic finds Reiner. Reiner finds Jose Sa. Jose Sa is man of the match. Despite the fact that it's a 4-2 game. Despite the fact they've conceded four goals. Jose Sa has kept his team in a respectable scenario. He's made six massive saves. Matija Popovic, man of the match. Yes. Oh boy. Toma Basic has suffered a hip injury whilst chasing the ball. Bro, he's only 29. What the hell? I'm going to send him to a specialist. Hopefully, he's going to recover by the time, you know, whatever promise we promised to him happens. I don't... Again, I do this so often, I don't remember if I showed you, but he, he doesn't want to join me because he's waiting on a promise. But there is no promise. And it's been a bug. I've seen it a few times already in other people's saves and... It's frustrating. I, I don't want to let him go on a free. I don't want to sell him either. So if he wants to run down his contract, I guess it's something we're going to have to do. But it'll be really, really sad to see him go. Maybe I can bring him back later. But for now, he's injured for three to four months, which is not good. But on a better side, we beat Valencia for two. Very scary game. We could have lost. I'll be honest. We could have drawn. Not the best performance. But so far, so good. We managed to get three points. The games are tough. But what does this mean for us for the next episode? But yeah, I think the best shout will be we'll continue our Champions League thing and we'll play Shakhtar and Liverpool in the next two games last year. You remember, I don't need to remind you. I don't need to remind you what happened. Why? Why? Why, why did we draw them? Why did we draw them? I'm so pissed off. But yeah, so we're taking on those two teams. We're going to play all these other games off camera. We're doing not bad in the league. We're still doing great. Surprisingly, Vosvodats is refusing to you know, drop any more points since the last time I mentioned this. So it's a bit annoying, but I hope you had a great episode today. Yes, unfortunately, we lost against Porto. But disappointing, I'll be honest. We should have won. I hope your predictions have gone through and they have not been ruined by the Porto game. But it's an exciting game nonetheless. And anyways, if I won all those kind of games, it wouldn't have been a fun save, would it? Anyways, I hope you have a great time. I'll see you in the next episode. And I hope it's going to be a better one. And I hope we can beat Liverpool this time. Watch out, Jurgen Klopp. Bye, guys.